Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Daily News Weekly, where we highlight the stories from the past week that you might have missed. I am your host, Michael Sheridan. One Mets fan really took one for the team, and now he's going to sue. 54-year-old Alex Swanson attended a Mets game at City Field back in June with his three sons. They're all big-time fans, and everything about the day seemed like it was going to be a great day at the ballpark. Then the guy with that t-shirt gun came out, and that's where things went south. Now, according to a lawsuit filed at the Queen Supreme Court, Swanson went down to the railing hoping to catch one of the t-shirts and add another Mets shirt to his uh, already apparently vast collection of Mets memorabilia. Uh, that's when apparently he noticed that the guy with the launcher was having some sort of difficulty, and then the muzzle of the launcher drifted downwards, and then it went off. And apparently shot a t-shirt right at Swanson, hitting him in the face and knocking him down. He was knocked unconscious, according to the lawsuit. And when he woke up, he found that his sons were standing over him, as well as some people from the stadium. He went to the uh, nurse's station, but refused to go to the hospital because he could still see through his eye. Apparently, the guy who launched off the t-shirts wasn't there or left uh, after the incident. Now, apparently, Swanson's attorney did tell the Daily News that although Swanson didn't go to the hospital directly after the incident, he did go to the doctor and he did get a CAT scan. And the CAT scan showed that he suffered a, uh, a concussion and severe eye trauma. And the trauma was so severe, apparently, that his retina largely detached and was only hanging on by a thread and anything could cause it to completely detach. I don't really know what any of that means, but it sounds pretty bad. Now, according to the lawsuit, uh, it isn't clear how much Swanson is looking uh, in terms of monetary compensation, but he does seem to uh, uh, believe that t-shirt, these t-shirt guns or launchers, whatever you call them, uh, should be banned, that they should not be allowed to be used at sporting events, or at least baseball games. I mean, they're pretty popular at any event. I mean, I've, I've seen them at, at races, I've seen them at football games, baseball games, you know, minor league games. I mean, they're, they're pretty popular. Uh, I've only seen a few times where, where people have been injured, but what do you think? Are t-shirt launchers a threat to society and should they be banned? A woman in Utah was attacked by a bison, but strangely enough, the guy she was with at the time was also attacked by a bison several months before at the same park. Kaylee Davis met up with Kyler Borges for a date where the two were going to take a run through Antelope Island State Park. Back in June, Kyler himself was attacked by a bison there and according to KSL News, hadn't been back since. Now, according to KSL News, somehow Kaylee and uh, Kyler got separated or just weren't near each other uh, at a particular moment when uh, Kaylee encountered the bison. And knowing what happened to her friend, she got nervous and tried to go around the bison. Now, she notes that there were some people on bicycles approaching further down the trail and uh, thinks maybe that spooked the bison who then charged at her. Now, the bison did stay over her, like stand over her, and I guess was huffing at her and, and was scraping at the ground a little bit, but did, did eventually turn and move away, and she was okay. And fortunately, she only suffered a broken ankle and a cut on her leg, and that was it. Her injury was far less than what Kyler had suffered just a few months earlier. When he got attacked, he was stomped on, stepped on, and kicked repeatedly by the bison, and he suffered... Uh, uh, broken ribs, a collapsed lung, and head injuries. And the, the fact that he survived was pretty impressive. I think there's one important lesson here that uh, Kaylee and Kyler should probably uh, take from this experience. The bison don't like them, and they don't want them to ever come into that park ever again. Last week's episode, we talked about how the Anti-Defamation League has, de has uh, ruled or, or added the OK hand gesture to its list of symbols of hate because of its uh, apparent use by white supremacist groups or white supremacists. 3DS Max on YouTube wrote, White supremacy is not a problem in the USA. It's made out to be this horrible thing when in fact it's a small group of people who are proud of their race and heritage. <gasps> The horror to be proud of something, and the Jews cannot stand it. This is a fact. Uh, okay. Suzanne uh, Altarzuski uh, on Facebook wrote, Symbol of what now? 
Ridiculous to the max. I'm not really quite sure what she means there. Does she mean that that's a symbol of hate is ridiculous? That that's what's apparently being used for is ridiculous? That the okay symbol, which used to be an innocent sort of thing, has now gotten perverted because some jerks decided to start using it uh, and flashing it off in photos? I'm not really quite sure. Maybe, Suzanne, if you want to clarify that a little bit, you can comment on this episode. And Daniel Rudball uh, on Facebook wrote, So what happens to little rascals when Buckwheat says, okay, and gives the sign? Huh, people are ridiculous. Now, you know, I, I kind of think there's something valid there, but I would say that it doesn't necessarily mean that every time somebody uses the okay symbol, it's a symbol of hate. It's just that it's being used that way. I don't, I don't know. What do you think? It, it, is, this symbol, is the okay symbol now perverted completely? Uh, it can never mean just okay anymore? Or is the way in which it's being used matter? What do you think? Last week, we also talked about Area 51 and Storm Area 51 and raised the question, was it a failure? Did in the end, it was a bust and really turned out to be a nothing burger, to quote uh, uh, some people. Uh, Ken Staples Johnson on Facebook wrote, greatest marketing ploy ever to put a small town on the map. To be fair, the town of Rachel, Nevada is a well-known place to UFO people, so I'm not really quite sure it did them any favors. They were already a well-known town. I don't think they needed the marketing, although I guess it doesn't hurt. Didn't hurt them. Uh, and Jason Lamas uh, on Facebook wrote, if you go by the, I and he wrote a lot, honestly, about Ferry 51, so I'm only taking a small segment of what he wrote. Uh, if you go by the idea of bringing people together and near enough to Area 51 that it drew international attention, then yes, it was a great thing. And I think he's making the argument that the Storm Area 51 event actually kind of became something positive and wasn't a bust it did work. And there were multiple events, ultimately, not just the one in, uh, at, at Rachel, Nevada. And I'm, I'm going to tend to agree with them. You know, there were as some reports said there were as many as 3,000 people, as Jason points out in his comments, a lot, you know, several thousand people showed up. So I'd say Storm Area 51 was a success. And it's an interesting, weird piece of history when it comes to viral hits and viral stories, I would say. Now, when I was a kid and was riding the school bus, I had some interesting school bus drivers. I had one school bus driver that I remember who obsessively played Diana Ross music every morning. But I never had one that drove drunk. At least, not that I'm aware of. 48-year-old Catherine Macaron was busted on September 12th after a student called 911 to report her drunk driving. According to reports, the Washington State school bus driver reportedly ran at least three red lights and was driving erratically. Now, apparently the school bus was fitted with a video camera and it captured a lot of what happened. Here's a small portion. Yeah, sometimes you wonder why you look like someone else and you're like, wow, I don't know who they are. Why do I look like them? And they say, wow, you look just like them. You look great. If you want to see the full video, go ahead and click up there or you can always click up in the link down in the description below. What I actually found kind of interesting about this video is there's a lot of descriptions in the stories that the children are screaming, terrified. And that may be true, but there's also a lot of laughing going on in the video, uh, which I thought was kind of interesting because it seemed to me like maybe not all the kids quite understood what was going on or the potential danger they were in. What's also funny to me is like listening to her go on and on about her husband and everything. I feel like I've met that drunk person at the bar multiple times and then got stuck having to listen to them go on and on and on about their lives, talking about random stuff. It just seemed very familiar. I'm also willing to bet that perhaps at one point or another, I've been that person. Last week, as we mentioned in the previous episode and talked about in the comments, the Anti-Defamation League has declared the OK hand symbol as a symbol of hate. And then this happens. A family was enjoying a holiday at Universal Studios in Florida. 
Their daughter, who has autism, posed for a photo with a minion and grew during a breakfast at the resort. The family, however, were shocked when they later noticed the actor in the Gru costume appeared to make the now infamous OK symbol with his hand while it was on the young girl's shoulder. The family naturally went and complained to Universal Studios. According to USA Today, the actor was then fired and the uh, family received free tickets and a gift card. But seriously, what the heck is wrong with people? All right, that's it, everybody. Thank you for watching. And uh, if you enjoyed this episode, please hit that like button down below. Don't forget to share this episode with your friends, your family, your coworkers. And let's hear what your thoughts were about the stories we talked about this week or just the show in general in the comments below. Thank you very much and have a good week.